Folks, shock in Mississippi, an African-American man found hanging from a tree. The FBI and Mississippi Bureau of Investigation are investigating the suspicious death of 54-year-old Otis Bird in Claiborne County. Now, until we get an autopsy, we don't know if this was, uh, would be called a suicide or a homicide. The NAACP requested a federal investigation, and now the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division and the United States Attorney's Office are involved in the case as well. Joining us right now on the phone is Derek Johnson. He is president of the Mississippi uh, NAACP branch, or the state branch. Uh, and of course, we're still here with our, here with our panel, Drew Elons, uh, Cleo Monago, as well as Stephanie Brown James. Derek, um, this is obviously disturbing. It is, it is shocking. Uh, we also uh, recognize that uh, it was in Mississippi. You had the case of the black man who was run over, targeted, and killed by white teens. A total of about 10 of them, uh, and all of them have pled guilty. Six or seven have already been sentenced to prison. Um, how did this story come to your attention, uh, and uh, when did you get involved in this particular uh, case? Right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, our local branch president in Claiborne County and other members called us uh, once they learned that uh, Otis Burt was found hung in a tree. Uh, Claiborne County is a the highest percentage African-American county in the state. The current chair is the immediate past president of the NACP. So we have a rich and fertile uh, membership base in that county. And when an incident like this happens, they would immediately call us. Uh, our uh, immediate response uh, along with the sheriff was to call federal authorities to go in and preserve evidence and investigate and make a determination whether or not this was in fact a racial hate crime. Uh, we've had other issues in the state in the past uh, and we want to make sure we don't rush for justice. Claiborne County fortunately in this situation very similar to the city of Jackson when we had the incident of uh, James Perry Anderson is a majority black county. The individuals who are in authority and charged with the responsibility of investigating come from the community and have proven themselves to be accountable to the community. Derek, have you had an opportunity to talk to Otis Bird's uh, family? Uh, have you communicated with uh, folks uh, who know him who, that, that can give us a sense of, uh, of who he was, what happened on that particular day? No, we have not. Well, uh, our local branch president, he did talk to the family. The FBI met with them on yesterday. Uh, they have since asked for some levels of privacy, so we have stayed away to allow them to, you know, to take in the fact that after he had been missing for over a week, close to two weeks, uh, that they realized that he was, in fact, found dead. So one second. Uh, so, so, so he was missing for up to two weeks? Yeah, it was over a week, maybe was 10 days or so. Where, uh, where he was found, how far was that from where he lived? Uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting conflicting. Uh, so it's a rural area. I've heard as far as four miles from his house, I've heard as close to a half a mile from his house. Uh, the last known place he was seen was in the next town over Vicksburg. Uh, and that was on, uh, I believe it was March 6th. Uh, they reported him missing, I believe it was March 10th. Uh, after they had not heard from him. And so uh, they was uh, expecting something bad. They didn't realize that, in fact, his, him being missing was the result of him being, uh, uh, being found dead. Was his body deteriorated, or was it, what condition was his body in when you found it? Uh, well, I didn't find him. I'm told there was some deterioration, but everything outside of him being confirmed dead, him being confirmed, uh, hang, found hanging from the tree, Anything outside of that is speculation at this time. Uh, the investigation is ongoing. I talked to the sheriff last night around 8 o'clock. Uh, uh, he has some idea of what may have happened, but he's asked both the state and federal uh, officials to come in and to confirm the speculation. And at this time, I don't think anyone want to jump out and have a rush to judgment. Yeah, and, and I'm glad that, you know, Derek brought up that last point about not having a rush to, to judgment. I know a few uh, years ago that there was a similar case where, um, you know, a, a black individual was found hung. It was actually ruled a suicide. Um, but one of the things that I just want to point out. Well, is that one was ruled a suicide, but there still were questions raised about yes. that. The family was saying that we're questioning that particular ruling. Right. Mm -hmm. But one thing well, I, I well, definitely well, want to. Let, let's be clear about that. That case happened in Wilkinson County, Mississippi. The sheriff was Sheriff Reginald Jackson. Uh, myself, along with Shokwe Lumumba's 
attorney, we went down, we met with Sheriff Jackson, with the sister uh, who, uh, who was a part of the family, and we went through all of the information. And the immediate family uh, all agreed that it was, in fact, a suicide. Uh, Sheriff Lucas in Claiborne County is very similar to Sheriff Jackson in Wickerson County. Uh, and they want to make sure that if there are people running around lynching black men, uh, Sheriff Jackson would kind of say, uh, clearly that he would be the first to want to find them because they may be coming after him next. And, and uh, so, and so I, I don't want to, want to play uh, Sorry, the Darryl. game right. of speculative, Absolutely. speculative investigation. I want to be clear that we don't rush to judgment as we watch and make sure those who are charged with responsibility are held accountable for doing a thorough and complete investigation. And this is the power of local organizations, because if it had not been for the Claiborne County NAACP, we wouldn't even know um, Mr. Bird's name because they had that relationship already with the family. Derek Johnson and the NAACP has constantly been stalwarts when it comes to civil rights. They operate in the spirit of Megar Evers in that state. And so this just shows why it's so important that we have strong local organizations like the individual branches of NAACP and the state conference to stay up on uh, issues like this that happen. Yes. I was just going to say this happened uh, because of Sheriff Lewis understanding of the significance of finding a black man hanging from the tree. He mm -hmm. immediately uh, quarantined uh, the area and called in for federal investigators to come and provide the necessary support. Cleburne County is a really unique county. It had one of the most successful boycotts in the history of this country. It bankrupt every a business downtown Port Gibson that refused to provide quality service to African Americans. And this was in the 80s. So it's a very strong community. They fight. They are clear about their positioning. So we, we, this is not Ferguson. This is an area where black folks have fought. They have gained controls of government. They hold one another accountable. Sometimes they have a lot of infighting, but they hold each other accountable. So if there is an issue of racism in this county that's over 80% black, I don't think anyone will be... Uh, are ready to cover it up. Gotcha. Um, I'm, unfortunately, I'm absolutely out of time. Derek, I certainly appreciate it. Uh, thank you so very much uh, for joining us, uh, and we'll certainly be uh, waiting the t autopsy results uh, and following this story to, to its conclusion. Thanks a lot. Ro, Ro, Ro you let Stephanie uh, take all my time, man. I thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Folks, yeah, coming up next on News One Now, what's it like to get to know and cover three United States presidents from the White House? Well, veteran journalist April Ryan dishes on that in her new book. Also, we'll show you the black beauties that the American fashion history left behind. It's all in the new book, Vintage Black Glamour. And later, the countdown to my interview on Sunday with Monique. The primetime special is Monique Uncensored. Well, a sneak peek, trust me, you don't want to miss that. It's 21 after the hour. News 1 Now on TV1.